The following episode may contain material that some listeners may find triggering or disturbing and may not be suitable for younger audiences, including depictions of sexual assault, violence, and suicide. Listener discretion is advised. Perspective is everything. It would have been really easy to just be like, I hate my life. I'm going to stay in my bed. I'm not going to push myself to learn to dress myself. I'm not going to push myself to learn how to use the bathroom where I can do it independently. And I think it was just like this through my journey, I just changed my perspective. Like, I don't know if there's a will, there's a way. And I think that's in any situation, like changing your perspective. Like, even when I go out and about, like, okay, they're staring at me. It's because I look cute. So I think that's something I learned and I'm still working on it, like changing my perspective. And so I think perspective is everything. And just knowing that like, it's gonna be okay. It started to like help a lot because I was just like, life, I guess just started thinking like life isn't that bad. These are stories featuring everyday women who have overcome some extraordinary obstacles. From Ash Media Network, this is the good news. Hey there, welcome back to the Good News Podcast. This is the last episode of our first season, and I am equal parts sad yet proud of what we've been able to accomplish during our time together. A few things before we get started. I first have to thank all of you for tuning in to this show over the last few months, and I'm so proud of what we've been able to do. What was once an idea is now a reality. An even greater thanks to Don, Tyra, Tiana, Anissa, Letitia, Jewel, Didi, Ashley, and Nikki. Thank you for allowing us to share your story with the world. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for being vulnerable with us and sharing the deepest parts of yourself in the way that you wanted to share. There is no challenge that you are not equal to. Never forget that. This is the last episode of season one, but we are absolutely going to be doing season two. And that being said, if you have an extraordinary story to tell, I want to hear from you. Click the link in the description of today's episode and complete the submission form. You may be featured on season two. Also, if you've loved season one of the Good News Podcast, please leave us a rating and a review on the podcast app that you're tuning in on. This helps others find the show, and to be honest, we just like hearing from you. Okay, let's get into today's episode. Today's story is from Nicole, but she goes by Nikki. Nikki is another Chicago girl, and when we first sat down for her interview, all we talked about was Chicago food and Chicago summers. Nikki's story really hit home for me, and I really felt like it was meant for us to meet. Stories like hers, stories like the ones you've heard, are why I started this podcast in the first place. I'll pop in later, and I'll explain why. But for now, enjoy this. Take this one in. You won't regret it. Here's Nikki. My name is Nikki and I'm from Chicago. So I grew up with my twin sister and my mom and my dad. My mom and dad have now been like married for like 27 years, maybe, maybe more. Um, grew up with them like in the house, you know, regular schmegler family. I mean, we had our issues, you know, like anyone else. That's kind of my family. We have a big family. Like my dad's side is huge and my mom's side is pretty big family as well. So a lot of cousins, a lot of um, aunts and uncles. I do remember a lot, like with my mom and dad, we would go to the lake sometimes and just like walk on the lakefront, which I think made like my love for nature and like the beauty of this city because something we wouldn't even do anything sometimes, but it was like the funnest thing. Maybe they'd get us an ice cream from the, like, person walking on the strip. But, like, it didn't have to be much. They had their sandwiches. And it just, the city's so beautiful. We would take pictures, like, and just things like that. Like, the touristy things, but not so touristy. Just to get out the house because we were kids, I guess. Now looking back, it's probably just to keep us busy. But, (laughs) because we were probably going crazy fighting in the house with each other. 
she went away for college and I just remember like we would she we would both call each other randomly like and would know that something was like going on so I feel like that was like that twin thing where we really saw like wow because we grew up together our whole life and I don't know if I've ever saw, thought we had it before we were apart and we like would just know like I thought you needed to talk it was weird like random to be like in the middle of the day like oh, I feel like she's crying right now and like we would know it'd be kind of weird <laughs> I love her sense of humor. She's hilarious. It's very dark, so not everyone will be used to it. But, like, I don't know. I guess I know her, so it's just funny <laughs> to me. Like, what, how she, like, just talks sometimes. I'm like, oh, my God. And I, other people probably be sitting there like, why are you laughing? But I know she's joking. I just think it's hilarious. And I'm like, oh, my God, she can't say that. Like, she, like, even, like, with this trauma we've experienced, she makes some dark humor about it. And I'm like, whoa, like, you can't do that. <laughs> but I'd be laughing because it's hilarious. Yeah, I think people a lot of times think we're very similar because we are. But we're also, like, really different. So it was on a Sunday. I always remember. It was March. It was St. Patty's Day, so March 17th, 2019. And it was... Um, I didn't live where I currently live. I lived in an apartment in Chicago. That, you know, Chicago, St. Patty's Day is crazy here. Like, and I was a bartender. So I had worked the Saturday where when it was the parade. So the bar was like packed. So Sunday, me and a few like people, my sister were just like, let's go. Let's like hang out and go out. Me and my sister were definitely like, let's go out. Let's just like, not for St. Patty's Day, but we went to this like little bowling alley bar um, in Chicago. It's called Pinstripes. Went there, they didn't really have like a St. Patty's crowd or anything. Me and my sister had like some dinners. Then my friend wanted to meet up with me that also worked at the bar with me, with her boyfriend at the time. And we all just ended up going out. I'll be honest, for me, the night is like really blurry. So everything I say at this point is more so like what people told me and like what has come back in my memory. But then we went after Pinstripes, we went to another like another place where another friend of mine worked because I was in the industry. Everyone in the restaurant industry knows each other. And we went to another bar that was like in another part of, in, in Chicago, but another part of the town. So now in the same area as Pinstripe. Met up with her, then went to a bar around her job. And that's when we got in the car with the guy's boyfriend who, I was under the impression that he wasn't drinking like that, which I know it's never good to like drink and drive. We didn't have our seatbelt. We were in the back. So there was three of us in the back and the boyfriend driving and then my, his girlfriend in the front, who was my friend. Something happened in the car and he started speeding on the Ontario feeder ramp downtown and um, hit the medium. Me and my sister were ejected from the vehicle. <laughs> the theory is that I went first because I was the one like with my face all like beat up and bloody but she looked like untouched. Like if you was to a blind eye, you wouldn't even think like her makeup was still intact. She was, she was asking for her purse and her jacket. For me, it looked like I would, I guess I would look like I was dead. When they saw me, like the blood that was on my face, just laying there, I was not conscious. I wasn't talking. We broke our back and our neck. And he actually ended up leaving the scene and I guess bystanders called the ambulance. So the friend that was in the front seat, she remembers like a lot of it, like what happened, the actual accident itself. Um, and I've asked her questions here and there and she's actually, I wanted to know like everything, but I don't know, I, have, I haven't gotten there where I wanna know all the details because sometimes I'm like, maybe, maybe I'm meant to not know everything. I'm just meant to know what I know. She's told me like the gist that I knew, like how we flew, we flew out. But I told her I like didn't want to know details. I just wanted to know the general how it happened, and that's how I know bystanders were there. I was probably in the house for like three months total, like overall. I mean, I was in so much pain, so they were giving me all any type of pain med that you could probably think of. So my sister actually, that's one thing I can say I remember. She was in the hospital too. So we were at Northwestern. Because the next day after the accident, so March 18th, we were rushed into like spinal surgery. We had the same surgeon, so we both had our spinal surgeries and she was put in a different room. And I just remember like week one, I would ask about my sister, but nobody was really telling me anything. 
So when I was supposed to get another surgery, because I also um, had broke like a disc in my neck too. So I broke my back, my ribs, my sternum, and the the disc in my neck that like was bulging out, I guess. So they didn't want to do those surgeries, like the back surgery and this one back to back. So they waited a week. So I refused to go into the second surgery for the the week later until I was able to see my sister. And they're like, we don't know how we're going to do this. Like, it's not like I could just walk and go into her room because I couldn't move. And I was so fragile. Like nobody even really wanted to touch me. Like I was literally broken. Because I swore, like, I was like, they're, they're telling, they're not telling me that she died because they want me to keep fighting. If I don't see that she's good, what's the point? That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm not going to lie. I was like, what's the point? Because they were telling me about everyone else, but I had never heard anything about my sister. So in your, my head, I'm thinking, like, well, what is going on? But um, somehow they figured it out. They had, like, some big board. But they strapped me to this board. And they rolled me in to see her. So she was on her bed, like her hospital bed in ICU. And she had, we both had neck braces on. She also had the ventilator, like, in her, I'm pointing, like people can see, but she had the ventilator, like, um, in the middle of her neck. So I could see, like, that machine coming out of her neck and plugged into whatever it was plugged into. She had a ton of machines by her. I mean, I did too, but I wasn't hooked up to all of them. And she was like hooked up to stuff like, because she couldn't breathe too. My sister always had asthma her whole life. So it wasn't now that she was just paralyzed. They were also worried that she couldn't breathe because of her asthma that she had forever. She wasn't able to move from the neck down. At the time she was just laying there and like, she was also very medicated. And we kind of looked at each other and we had like our whole family was there because they knew that it was going to happen. I mean, everyone knew that I refused to go to surgery. Um, everyone was in the room. I just remember like a ton of phones out and and then I just went, um, the nurse like looked around and I think she could tell my face, but she asked like, do you want um, them to leave? And I was like, because at the time I didn't have a anything like in my throat or anything, but I, it was so hard to talk like we were just so weak so I wasn't really even verbal either but I looked at her and I was just like like yeah get them out and they all left the room except the nurses that were monitoring me my sister because and me and my sister just started crying (laughs) then I found out like when I was able to see her is because she was she broke her neck so she broke her spine too but She broke her spine where it's in your neck, which means you usually have more severe like paralysis or just the way it damages your nerves is worse. So she couldn't move from the neck down. So they were more worried about her. They knew that I was going to be able to like move. Even though I wasn't at the time, the doctor already had told like my family, like she's going to be able to move and do X, Y, Z, like she's good. But it wasn't, I guess, the same for my sister. They weren't telling me because she, they didn't know she was gonna make it. She kept having ammonia and with the paralysis, she couldn't like cough or do anything. So they didn't, they didn't honestly know if she was gonna make it. So I, I saw in that moment when I saw her, I was like, that's why they're, she's worse. I guess we now hate saying worse off because who's someone to say that someone's worse off than another person? <laughs> But she was like, I guess, worse off to me when how it looks on paper. I know I can say no one actually ever told me like, hey, you're paralyzed. Like no one ever told me. It wasn't until so I I was in ICU, like intensive care. And then they moved me to like another floor in Northwestern to like, it's like the transition for like, let's see if she's good enough to go to rehab or if we're going to have to send her back to intensive care. I was in that room and in that room, I just remember thinking like, oh, I'm going to like thinking, I guess you can compare. I was thinking like I broke my leg or something because I knew I couldn't feel like I knew that they were moving me in different ways. I'm like, I knew what, like I was seeing all this happening and I knew I couldn't feel what was going on down there. But I'm thinking like broken leg. Oh, when I go to rehab, they're going to teach me how to they're going to rehab me to do this again. Just like maybe this is how broken legs work. That's what I'm thinking. Like. 
maybe maybe this is how people who break their legs feel. Spinal injuries are very complex. Belly button down is like where I couldn't feel. And at the time too, I did have like rib pain and they did do like the surgeries on here. So everything was kind of numb. But I knew that something was like up. And I knew I had a really great nurse. Shout out to her at Northwestern. Sometimes I would ask her questions, and but she never once said I was paralyzed, but she always let me know, like, well, you broke your back. But I didn't know what a spinal cord injury was, so I didn't put together, like, broken back means, like, paralysis. Like, honestly, I didn't really know what was going I knew that something bad happened, but I didn't know what was going on. Like, I didn't know, like, oh, this, like, you're going to be in, in a wheelchair. I didn't see, like, I just knew, like, damn, this is bad, like we're bad right <laughs> like even talking about it I'm like this seems like fake like this is things like this really happen for me it was I think so after surgery like in Northwestern they kind of start like I call it baby like occupational therapy and physical therapy um they started with occupational therapy they came to my room and they basically like they helped me literally with everything this first day they came but they literally helped me sit up at the edge of the bed and they brought a mirror in. I hadn't looked in the mirror and I don't even know, but probably two weeks, like, since I hadn't didn't have my phone, so like I was taking pictures and stuff like that. And I saw myself and I saw like my legs dangling. And I just, again, I started bawling because I was like, what is, I was like, and they were like, you want to, I was like, move the mirror, <laughs> like, and it was like in that moment where I was like, these people just helped. I don't think it was just looking in the mirror. It was like, they literally had helped me sit up. I couldn't balance. So I was like, had like three people around me just like kind of propping me to like sit straight. And it was just like everything that was happening. I was like, what is going on? Like, why? Like now I'm able to, obviously I'm able to move, but why am I not able to move? Like before I was confused. Like, why am I not able to move? And why are you guys helping me so much? Like, and may sometimes I wonder if I wish someone would have just told me, like, exactly what was going on. But, like, in my head in that moment, I was like, what is, like, this is a lot. Like, there was, like, four people in my room helping me move. Like, that's, it was weird because I couldn't move anything. I couldn't, I still had the neck brace on, so I couldn't move my neck or anything. I was so weak, too. Like, I couldn't lift myself up. Like, now I can pick myself, like up from the bed they did all that like three people just moved my body and it was weird because I was like wait why wasn't I was questioning like why wasn't I able to do that not realizing that I was like paralyzed and I had to like literally learn everything all over again oftentimes when we are in a really hard season of our lives we start thinking why me We think that we're alone and what we're experiencing is only ours to experience. And maybe we did something wrong along the way because why else would life feel the way that it does? Given the severe circumstances, I asked Nikki, did she ever ask herself, why me? Was she ever angry? Here's what she said. I know I was was definitely angry. How can, like, what is life going to look like? Like, I was, a, I was like, living on my own. I was had finished college. So I was teaching and bartending at night. I'm, like, thinking, like, how is life going to look like now? Even, like, before my accident, I didn't really want kids. But one of, like, the first things I asked, like, my rehab therapist was, am I still able to have kids? And she was like, yeah, of course. I was angry, but at the same time, I was also like, so this is possible. Like there's life after this. So sometimes I would be angry and then the next minute I'd be like sad. And then next minute I'd be like super motivated. Like I'm going to do this. Like we got this. And I was definitely worried about my sister. She wasn't in rehab with me. So I was worried. I only visited probably twice when I was in rehab, but um, I also knew that her injury meant more paralysis because I had started to ask questions. So I was like worried about her and like, how is she going to handle this? Like, how was life going to look like for her? Kind of the same worries I had, but for her too. So I'm like, what happens now? Like, I didn't know anything about wheelchairs or wheelchair users or how accessibility works and 
adapting like your home and I like I said I was just very ignorant <laughs> to to this life so I actually remember a time my cousins came to visit and I just started crying and I was like why I'm a good person why did this happen to me why and they just like they did I, they didn't say anything they didn't know what to say and I would think that a lot like why oh why is this happening to me like why is this happening to me like I was a good person I did everything by the books in my book like so I thought and I was just like that's like my would be my thoughts when I was angry like why me this is unfair like I would just be like so tore up over that and it wasn't until I like I started to just tell myself like everything happens for a reason like I don't know why at the time I didn't know why but I was doing like mental therapy they provide that in rehab therapy like right away rightfully so she had kind of started to help me like write down gratitude and she also thought it would be like a good OT because at the time I after you like go through all that that like experience you're just so weak like I can't even explain it but I couldn't even hold a pen so she was like I want you to start writing what you're grateful for every morning and also that we help you practice writing like I'm like okay like (laughs) I'm like okay let me do this and I started to do that and I started to think like okay everything happens for happens for a reason everything's gonna like be okay and then I started to like write what am I grateful for and it was weird because I was being grateful for like little things like I remember writing down like I'm grateful for being able to sit in my chair for 30 minutes today because I would get so dizzy when I'd sit in that wheelchair that they put me back in the bed because I couldn't sit in it like it didn't it hurt it was exhausting and I would I was like wow like and it's and then I started to notice like each day things would seem a little more light like felt like a, I guess a little normal or like when I learned to dress myself like today I learned to put the pants over my ankle I would write honestly like because then after like I started doing it in the morning she also wanted me to do it at the end of the day I want you to write in the morning and I was like okay and again too like this whole time too my hands getting stronger like so I'm getting also excited like because I'm seeing like oh I'm doing this every day and my grip got a little better like I'm, it doesn't hurt to move my fingers. Like I would write just stuff like that. I'd be like, oh, like, wow, I'm able to do this. Or like in therapy, I'd accomplish like t- getting off my neck brace, like finally. So I'd write that down. I started to be happy because once you start like going through therapy, and this is, I don't know if this is true for everyone who experiences like traumatic situations, but you know, people were visiting a lot in ICU and then it slows down like in rehab. So I would even just be grateful for who came. Like I'm glad so-and-so visited. That made my day. My therapist also started showing me, like, other women with disabilities on social media. So then it started, like, my gratitude started being a little different. Like, oh, I'm grateful for, I still have my brain. Because I saw, I'm like, they're still doing stuff. Yeah, it's all in their wheelchair, but they're still living. And then I started to be more appreciative of what I, instead of thinking of all the things I lost because of this accident, I started thinking of all the things that I still had. Like, honestly, it could have been worse. The truth is it. I could have been here, but been completely like brain dead. So sometimes I'm just, I, I started just being grateful. I was like, wow, you still have your brain. Like you still, like I, you still remember all your education. Like I was like thinking that in my head. So it started to like help a lot because I was just like life, I guess just started thinking like life isn't that bad. mentally was probably the biggest challenge just like fighting with your mind I mean I I was an adult when I got injured so I remember everything and I was living in like an adult life is what I'm saying and battling with that like remembering the old you because even though people maybe don't change completely you change like anyone who goes through a traumatic situation like that you change even if it's for better for worse there's and it's like overnight so it's kind of it was a lot of like grieving the old me like I even had wrote a letter to myself like my old me I guess and it's just a lot of healing my biggest challenge is healing physically and mentally after my accident when we get injured or hurt or anything bad happens to us going back to like that bad things don't happen to like good people we automatically will think like why me or 
started thinking about how much better life was, like greener on the other side when it's not so much always that case. It started to make me realize, like, stop. I would blame everything on the accident, everything on my injury. Like, it's because of my injury. It's because of this. It's because of that. Like, same with friends leaving. Like, it's because of that. No, maybe it's just, like, the season of life. Maybe it's just you're changing. Because I know I changed after my accident. So why those friends are not going to be your same friends. Like, it's not just because of your accident or not just because of that experience. Like, And I had to learn that. Even not just friendships. Like, anything. Like even just like sometimes I'd get so frustrated because now I do like I have accidents on myself I get so frustrated and blame like myself and my accident and it's like no, now you got to stop doing that it's just the day like it's just the day that you're just being all over yourself may tomorrow won't be that day because I think then it makes us hate or it made me hate myself like sometimes when I would be like oh it's because of the accident it's because of my injury like and to like separate that like yeah your injury happened and but that happened March 17th now you're in a hole <laughs> now you're Nikki and you're just living your life and like things are gonna happen and you're gonna have good days and you're gonna have bad days it's not all because of this I mean yeah things stem from that like situations but I don't know for me rewording that in my head helped a lot some days I feel I see it. I see the future. I see the vision. I see the, like, oh, I see. I can see me living this life, like, in this chair for the rest of my life. And then there will be some days where I'm like, how the heck am I going to do this? So I don't know if it gets better. I think now I just know that it's a journey. I think the most important thing that I've learned is I just try not to give up on myself. All you got to do is just keep going. Like, don't allow yourself. And don't get me wrong, I've had day, days in a row where I'll be like, completely sad and then I'll tell myself like you nope you're not going day three and I know that takes a certain mindset mindset but I just hope if someone's listening to this and going through something like don't let yourself do it for like a week if it hits a week it's time to get out that like you got to do something else you got to change your routine and I strongly believe that because I don't know if it ever turn will feel better like I struggle with things disability related and not every day but I know that, like, it's possible. I don't know. I just can't believe that it's not. Like, I just can't. And <laughs> I really can't. Like, it's just, there's all for a purpose here. And I've always felt like that. So I think, I don't know when it ever turned around, but I just think, got to believe that there's more. We have a bigger purpose. Nikki and her twin sister, Ashley, have a YouTube channel, a channel I've been subscribed to since she told me about it. It is incredibly entertaining, and I learn something from them every video. They showcase their lives, and they really are out there living these big, beautiful lives, and not afraid to show it. I have to admit, there is a lot of unlearning that I have to do when it comes to people who are living with disabilities. I'll be honest, for me, it was one of those out of sight, out of mind things, right? I didn't realize how important accessibility was at the places that we go to and just making things that we do accessible to everyone, even if it's just as simple as holding the door. My sister and I, I, st I mentioned, I forgot to mention, but like even a year after my accident, I decided I want to YouTube my life. Like even, I don't have a crazy amount of subscribers or anything, but I just wanted, again, I just wanted the journey for myself. And I was just like, I'm going to make a YouTube channel and start sharing my life as like being newly injured in the like disability community and just put ourselves, me and my sister both put ourselves out there and that just created like such community. Like I know so many women now, not even just with spinal cord injuries, like across, honestly, a lot of women, different people, even like in Chicago, I feel like I've gained relationships with people from just sharing my story. And I felt like now I was showing up a little bit with the purpose and, and I loved educating people on it because I realized like if I was this ignorant to disabilities, I can't imagine how many people probably overlook someone with a disability don't talk to them, don't even say hi to them, don't even smile at them, just like kind of treat them like they're dumb because that's usually what happens. Maybe sharing my story, like someone from high school would just treat their like disabled neighbor a little better. Like we're all just human. Like I navigate the world a little differently, but like so does everyone. Some people drive a Honda, some people drive a Tesla. I asked Nikki 
for someone going through this right now, someone that is newly injured or living with a disability, what's the best piece of advice that you could give? And for someone who is not disabled or injured, what's the best piece of advice that you could give them? My biggest advice for someone in this situation is be grateful for your body because I was angry at my legs. Sometimes I'm like, why don't we just cut them off? But then I met people who had, who were amputees, who didn't have their legs or an arm. And it's not all that is cracked up to be. I think we think the grass is green on the other side. So I just think be grateful for your body and also treat your body beautifully like the queen that it is or the king that it is. Because I think after my injury, I came like, well, I had to become like more aware of my body and what I fed it and what I gave it and how even just like going out too long for the day like it was crazy to me how much my body would tell me like you it's time for you to go to bed like I would feel the pain listen to your body don't overexert yourself and also like community is just so big I don't know where I would be if I didn't have all that community but it message one person message me I usually will message people back message and honestly I message some people that never message me back I'm not gonna lie message don't give up like message people and try to just see you're not going to get along with everyone in the community we're all human too like we all have different likes and interests so find like someone that you can just kind of talk to and just learn stuff from because I learned I mean I can sit here all day and tell you all of the different programs and like women empowerment events there is for women in wheelchairs and things like that that I would never have known about if I didn't throw myself in the community so that's like and that's why that's one of my biggest advice is like seek out that like YouTube channel that has a girl with a disability and find different ones you might not always vibe with the same there's so much out there and don't stick in your bubble and like let people set those limits on you educate yourself I think if we just educate ourselves on like the differences in the world and have it exposed to us we won't be so like I guess ignorant and also what someone to be mindful for is just like have compassion for like anyone sometimes it's not always about you like it's not always personal have compassion like with people in this world and open the door for people please for wheelchair users I think with supporting the disability community I don't know if you ever heard of the term ableism it's discrimination against people with disabilities, just unlearning that. I just think that we can be better allies if we just try to unlearn some of the things that we think we know about disabilities. Like, and I had to do that too, while I had my disability. Like, they call that internalized ableism. Like, I had to unlearn it too. Like, I had to stop putting those thoughts in my head too about people with disabilities because once again like goes back to like we are all human we just some of us just do things a little differently perspective is everything it would have been really easy to just be like I hate my life I'm gonna stay in my bed I'm not gonna push myself to learn to dress myself I'm not gonna push myself to learn how to use the bathroom where I can do it independently and I think it was just like this through the, my journey I just changed my perspective like I don't know if there's a will, there's a way. And I think that's in any situation, like changing your perspective. Like even when I go out and about, like, okay, they're staring at me. It's because I look cute. So I think that's something I learned and I'm still working on it, like changing my perspective. And So I think perspective is everything. And just knowing that like, it's going to be okay. I don't believe in coincidences. And I don't believe it was a coincidence that Nikki and I met I started this podcast because I was in a deep state of grief. I lost my aunt and my gram, but I also lost one of my best friends. Her name was Nikki, and she passed away in a car accident right before her 33rd birthday. You see, this podcast was for all of you, but I needed it too. When my friend passed, I was kind of stuck. I really didn't understand why or how could something like this happen. But when Nikki reached out and shared her story and shared how no matter what life brings you, you still move forward, that life will continue to move on 
but so do you. I knew I had to meet her. I knew in my heart that my Nikki wanted me to. I feel like seeing then, so I haven't, I've did a lot of podcasts when I first got injured, like a lot. And I took a break. I was like, I'm not doing any more just to share my story. I was like, how much times can I keep telling the same story? You, when the case was done, you had put out that you were looking for like stories. And I was like, oh, let me just put it. And I usually like, I've gotten asked after the case to like be on podcasts. But again, they're all in the disability community. And God was telling me to go on a different platform. Don't keep doing your, the same people are hearing your story. Other women need to hear your story. She, I feel like I need to tell my story on here and to think I was in a car accident. Your friend was in an accident. I know a lot of people who were in accidents and had a friend pass and they were the ones who survived, but they're injured. And it's just like, I don't know just how the universe works. That's crazy. But I chose yours because I was like, other women need to hear this. And even just to like, just be safer out there. Like with the people we hang out with, the the drinking and driving, just being very safe and... And it was great because even my sister asked me, she's like, I thought you said you weren't doing any more podcasts. And I was like, no, I think this one is going to reach people that we haven't already reached. I asked Nikki that final question that I ask everyone. If you could go back and speak to your younger self, if you could go back to those moments in rehab and learning how to do life all over again, what would you tell yourself? What's the good news? I think I would probably tell her, breathe. It's going to be okay. But like I said, I experience a lot of anxiety. So sometimes I think I just, like, I was so worried about the future. Like, where am I going to live? Where, how am I going to make money? How am I going to do this? Like, I was, a, I worked a lot before my accident. I would, like, my heart would race and I would think, like, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how the future is going to work. Sometimes I wish I would have just, like, took a breath and more taken in the moment of, I was, like, very determined to, like, rehab and, like, get stronger. But sometimes I just feel like I needed to breathe. It's okay. Like, you're going through this situation. You don't need to have it all figured out tomorrow or in a year. And just tell her to breathe. Like, it's going to be okay. The good news is everything's going to be okay. And breathe. (laughs) Because I needed to. If you or someone you know is living with a disability, click the links in the description of today's episode to learn more about your local and federal assistance programs that may be available to you. You can also follow Nikki and her journey on her YouTube channel, linked in the description as well. This was season one of the Good News Podcast. The Good News Podcast is a collection of personal stories told week by week with brand new episodes coming soon. This podcast is brought to you by Ash Media Network. And remember, with every bad day, there will always be a good day to follow. With every obstacle comes a victory. There is always something good to look forward to. Good news is always on its way.